So in this video we'll be doing a Maths March 2021 mix sheet and going through some exam questions covering the topics of thirds, quadratics, polynomials, coordinate geometry, binomial probability, logarithms and regular bog standard probability. Now the mix sheet is marked out of 80 marks and should last around about 90 minutes. Now I will include a copy of this mix sheet in the description below for you to download or what you can do is pause the screen on each of the questions. I will go through the question papers uh, the questions rather slowly for you to pause the video and then what I'll do is as soon as I've gone through it I'll go through the answers. Now, the thing to note with regards to question one is that although as I don't know what the quality of your screen is going to be like but the denot it is a plus sign on both the numerator and the denominator so that fraction should read 5 root 2 plus 2 and 3 root 2 plus 4 and it needs to be expressed in the form of m plus n root 2. And what we'll do now is we'll go through the answers. So before we get started, let me just emphasize uh, something on this particular question and the fact that the signs in the third are both positive. Let me just, they do look like subtract. So in terms of the first question, then what we need to do is show that then we've got this third can be expressed in the form of m plus n root 2 where m and n are integers so here we need to rationalize the denominator so here if I start off by writing the question now although your calculator will allow you to do this or not actually you can use your calculator but it just means that you won't get any marks for it so we can automatically use our calculator to work out what m and n should be but we still need to show our working out so again we need to do multiply both the top and the bottom by the denominator flipping here I've got 5 root 2 plus 2 3 root 2 minus 4 all over 2 plus 4 2 and I should really learn how to write in a straight line so then moving on from this, what we should have now, that would actually get me one mark. I actually did do that. So the next thing I've got to do is now expand and simplify. So here, looking at the numerator, I've got 30 minus 20 root 2 plus 6 root 2 minus 8. It's all over. That's going to be 2. Again, because looking at the simplifications, and that will get me one mark for expanding and simplifying. So the last and final mark comes from actually going on to simplify this further. So I've got 30 to take away 8, which is 22, minus, and it's going to be 14 root 2 over 2. And obviously then I can cancel the 2, so I've got 7, 11, give me a final answer of 11, 7, 2. Yeah, my answer. So again, do I need to emphasize what M and N are? No, because all it tells me is that M and N should be whole numbers. And that's exactly what they are. So moving on to question two. So again, question two refers to quadratics, and the first part refers to completing the square. So from this, what we need to do is, and again, it's only worth two marks. So you get one mark for the correct number, the well, correct value of p, and one mark for the correct value of q. So here we've got x minus three squared plus sixteen minus nine. 
and simplifying that we get x minus 3 squared plus 7. So it then says uh, for b curve has the equation of y equals x squared minus 6x plus 16 and one thing you should note is that that is the same as what we've got here. Uh, using lens part A or otherwise, find the coordinates of the vertex of the minimum point. Well, the fact that we've now got this into computing a square mode, then your minimum is if x plus a squared plus b, then your vertex, or your maximum minimum point, is going to be at minus a b. So for this, where is the vertex going to be? Well, if a is positive here, then a is going to be negative here, so a equals minus so it's going to be plus 3 and b is going to equal 7 that is two answers in terms of the coordinates then it's just going to be 3 for the next one in terms of sketching the graph well if I draw my set of axes be relatively straight now it's going to cross at when x equals 0, so that's going to cross at 16, so that's going to be the y intercept. And the next thing I've got to do is look at the minimum point, which is 3, 7. So imagine 3 is going to be here, 7 is going to be there. So it should look like. Now, one thing I would suggest that you do when you are sketching is try and do the curve first and do the interception point labeling after. So here, that's going to be 16 and that's going to be 3 and if I wanted to I could label that as 7 really it's not really necessary so and that's just two. so part uh, b3 says state the equation of the line of symmetry now the line of symmetry is going to go through this line here that is x plus 3 and one more and then finally it says describe the geometric transformation that maps the graph of y equals x squared onto the equation that we've had all day from the start of this equation. Now with this it is graph transformations but because it's looking at quadratics all I need to do is compare the minimum points of both these two graphs. So on y equals x squared the minimum point is at 0 0 which if I wrote that as a column vector would be 0, 0, and on y equals x squared minus 6x plus 16, but the minimum point is at 3, 7. Write that as a common vector, 3, 7. So looking at how do I get from this to this, well the answer here is going to be a translation, it always is, and the column vector is going to be 3, Seven. There is my final answer. Now moving on to question three. So question three is coordinate geometry, and it says that a line has equation y equals mx minus one, where m is a constant. The curve has the a curve has the equation of y equals x squared minus five x plus three. Show that the x ordinates uh, x coordinates should say of any intersection. So straight away you see intersection one topic that should come into mind is simultaneous equations so what we need to do is i need to substitute this equation into this equation so let's have a look at doing that so here they're both equal y and what i can do is i can x squared minus 5x plus 3 is equal to mx plus 1. now taking everything all onto one side because we want it to look like a quadratic x squared minus 5x minus mx plus 3 plus 1 which then leaves me with x squared minus 5x minus mx plus 4 equals 0 and second and now what I need to do is just simply factorize this middle part so I've got x squared minus 5 plus m it's going to be a plus because when I because I've got a minus outside when I expand that out it's going to turn into a negative x plus 4 equals 0 and it's only worth one mark so you expect to do that in about so moving on to question b it then says find the values of, of m for which the equation 
and then the equation has equal roots. Now, as it has equal roots, so as it has equal roots, then b squared minus 4ac equals 0. Now, it is really, really important that you do actually write that. So although it's usually giving you the clue of equal roots, make sure that you, you write down in your solutions the proof of the discriminants that you that, that, that then refers to. So from this, what we can then do is go on to find out what these values are going to be. So here I've got the B. So here I've got A equals 1, B equals minus 5 plus M, and C equals 4. So substituting this into the discriminant, I've got an important square bracket. Uh, minus 5m minus 5 minus m that squared minus 4 times 1 times 4 that's equal to 0. So expanding this out, which again is something I'm going to need to do, I end up with and it's going to be minus, well, let's work out with let's say minus 5 minus m. So here I've got 25 plus 5m plus 5m squared. So it comes is 25 plus 10m plus m squared minus 16e0. So from this, what I can then do is simplify it. So I've got m squared plus 10m equals plus 9 equals 0 and does this factorize uh, yes it does so I've got m plus 9 m plus 1 0 so m equals minus 9 alternately what I could do is with this I could just plonk it straight into my calculator and it would have given me the solutions problems at all the next question then says describe geometrically the situation where m takes either of the values found in part b well the fact that it's got equal roots means that it's going to intercept at one point and lines that intercept at one point are therefore called tangents line tangent to the curve and there we go for our one mark so moving on to question four, which refers to polynomials. So here we've got a, a, a cubic polynomial. Uh, P of x is given by P of x equals x minus two, x squared plus x plus three. Show that P of x can be written in the form of blah, uh, where a, b are constant values. So here what we need to do is we just simply need to expand the back. So this one's relatively quite straightforward. So here I'm gonna do it over, over x minus two, x squared, plus x plus 3, expanding the brackets out, I get cubed, plus x squared plus 3x, minus 2x squared, minus 2x, 6, adding them all up, I get x cubed, minus x squared, plus x, minus 6. So, so here we've got our values of a equals minus 1 and b positive 1. So moving on to b, it says prove that the equation only has one real root and state its value. Now if this has one real root then basically you can see here that this is our only solution. So the only solution is equals 2. Now to show it's only got one solution, what I need to do is show that there's no solutions for this. So need to show no solutions. Yes. Now one way of showing it's got no solutions is by using discriminants. So here, if um, so, looking at this, all I then need to do is show that b squared minus 4ac work out the value so using 
that we end up with is well b a equals one b is going to equal one and b is going to equal three. so looking at this i get one squared minus four times one times three which equals one minus twelve which equals minus eleven so as b squared minus four ac is less than zero solutions so something along those lines you probably don't need to go into as much detail as what i've done it's more of a case of just explaining hopefully to you for it to make sense so moving on to question five we move on to coordinate geometry yeah, so here it says question five says so circle has center two minus one and a radius of five point p has coordinate six two write down the equation of the circle so to find the equation of the circle what i need to do is need to find out the radius and I need to know the center so for this it's probably the most easiest three marks I would say for this particular question so here I've got this is going to be my x1 this is going to be my y1 so what I've got is I've got x minus 2 squared plus y plus 1 squared equals uh, is my final answer now again really generously marked where the three marks would come from is this value here this value here writing that value there now if you were to write it as 5 squared instead of 25 then that would be absolutely fine there's no essential need for you to expand the powers to write it as 25 if you wrote um, 5 squared then that's now to verify the point P lies on the circle well there's a couple of ways in which you can do this you can either sub the coordinates into the equation or the left hand side of the equation and show it equals 25 but I would say a much preferred way of doing this is basically an alternate way would be to find the distance between E and C and if it equals the radius then now what is really really important is you need to state one of these two things before you actually start plugging in the numbers so always make sure that you are writing one of those key statements to justify one of the marks because just by saying x y and just randomly putting it out with no sort of understanding as to what you're doing could cost you a couple of marks. Now I know it's only worth two marks, but again, it's not worth that risk. So if you were to substitute it in, you should get the answer of 25, or that the distance of P e to C or CP is equal to be FI in terms of that. So again, either of those two would be absolutely fine. Now in terms of working out the gradient of CP, well, we've got our coordinate of P, C is here. It's so all you need to do is use the formula of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And again, if I substitute that in, I should get the values of 2 minus minus 1 over, and it's going to be 6 minus 2, which gives me 3 over 4, or 0.75. So, part D says to find the gradient of a line that's perpendicular to CP. Well, all I need to do is just do the reciprocal. So that's going to be minus 1 over 3 over 4, which is minus 4 over 4. And then finally, hence find the equation of the tangent at point P of the circle. So for this, what I need to do is, using the gradient from DI, so here we've got M equals minus 4 over 3, and the coordinates for P are 6, 2. So substituting into the equation of the line, I get y minus 2 equals minus 4 over 3, x minus 6. And then obviously substituting that all in, or taking the 3 over, I get 3y minus 6 equals minus 4x minus 6. Expanding the right hand side, I get 3y minus 6 minus 4x plus 24 giving me 3y plus 4x 
go to and again there's no particular way of how they want me to write the answer so anything along those lines would be absolutely fine if anything you may even well actually will, will get a mark just for writing this so any correct formation of the line so if you've gone that little bit extra and gone all the way to simplifying it then that is going to be absolutely fine like i said this would get you full marks but there's always a risk it's always worth checking but for one mark if you've got time to do it do it if not for question six so with question six the question says point a so again continue with coordinate geometry it says point a has coordinates of one one and point b has coordinates of five k and so the line a b has the equation of three x plus four y equals seven show that k equals two so for this what we need to do is it's only worth one mark so what we need to do is basically substitute the coordinate into this line so this what we need to do, sub x equals 5 and y equals k into 3x plus 4y so from this we get 3 times 5 plus 4 times k equals 7 so here I've got 15 plus 4k equals 7 4k equals and then take the 15 uh, 15 over to give me minus 8 k equals 2 so moving on to the next one it says hence find the coordinates of the midpoint of a b well b now we've worked out what k is is going to have a coordinate of 5 minus 2 now the midpoint is basically where I add the coordinates the x coordinates up and do the same with the y ordinates and divide by 2 so here for two marks I get one mark for each correct order that I write in which I should have three and minus one five or one and a half never flip your boat now with question 6b what we need to do is work out the grain a b so here I'm going to use the formula of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 it doesn't really matter which corner you call first so I'm going to go for minus 2 minus 1 over 5 minus 1 leaves me with minus 3 4 then for part c it says line ac is perpendicular to a line ab find the gradient of ac so the gradient of ac is going to be the negative reciprocal so it's going to be minus 1 over minus 3 over 4 which gives me 4 over the question then says hence find the equation of ac now i don't yet quite know what the the coordinates of c is so i'm going to use a as my coordinate so m equals 4 over 3 my coordinate I'm going to use is a which is 1 1 so substituting in I've got y minus 1 equals 4 over 3 x minus 1 and expand taking the 3 over to the side I get 3 y minus 3 equals 4 x plus 4 again I can leave my equation like exactly like that or I can write it as 3 y minus 4 x equals one again any formation of that would be absolutely fine it's not specified in the question so it is what it is it's given that the point c lies on the x-axis find the x ordinate so the fact that it lies on the x-axis it lies somewhere along this line here means that y is going to equal zero so from the equation of 3y minus 4x equals minus one i'm going to let when y equals 0 then what I'm left with is minus 4x equals minus 1 so x equals there uh, is the x coordinate now moving on to question 7 which moves on to logs so it says given that n satisfies the equation you can see on the screen and what we need to do is show that we can write this as a quadratic so first things first what I'm going to do is we're going to break this up so I've got 2 log a n minus log a 5 minus 24 equals log a 4 now from this what we're then going to do is let's move this 2 over as a power so I've got log a n squared and then minus log a n then minus 24 
for. Now from this, what I can then do is join these two things up. So here I'm going to use the rules of logs. And when I'm taking away, I'm actually dividing. So it's going to be log a. It's going to be n squared over 5n minus 24. That all equals four. Now from this, what we can then work out is, well, we've both got log a's on both sides. So I can kind of cancel them out. So what I'm left with is n squared over 5n or equal 4. Now if I take this denominator over to the other side, I get n squared equals 4 and 5n minus 24. Expand the bracket, 20n minus, and it's going to be 96. And then if I take all of this over to the side to make it equal to 0, which is basically what they're wanting me to do here, n squared minus 20n plus 96 equals 0. I've actually gone to prove what they wanted me to. Now in terms of b, it then says hence find the values of n. So all I need to then do is go on to solve this. So here what I want to do is factorize if I can. So let me just write out the equation again. Now, alternatively, you can just simply stick it into your calculator and use your equation solver to do it. But this does factorize nicely. So I've got n minus 8, n minus 12 equals 0. So n equals 8, 12. And there is my final answer. So moving on to question 8, which again continues with logs. It says given that log ax equals 3, uh, log a6 minus log a8. Uh, where a is a positive constant, show that x equals 27. So again, what you want to do here is try and get it into written as, as a single logarithm. So what I want to try and do, my aim is to try and combine these two things here. So here I've got 3 log a6 minus log a8. Now this, is, this one here is absolutely fine. It's this one that I need to change. So I need to move the 3 to the front. So here I've got log a6 cubed minus log a8. And again, using the rules of logs, when you take away it's dividing, so I've got log a and it's going to be 6 cubed, which is 216. If I've last checked, so let me just double check to make sure that it is. And then underneath that, I've got divided by 8. And that all equals log a x. So from this, now that I've got single logarithms, I can cross them off. So x equals 216 divided by 8, which gives me an answer of 27. Let me show you that it is. Then moving on to question B. And so this should be relatively quite straight. But now, I'll be honest, if you've got the Casio FX991EX calculator, then this should really be absolute do uh, bread and butter to you because you just got to type it into your calculator, press the equals, and you get your answer. So here we should have a value of 0, 1, and 0 0.5 or a half. And the final one is 1. Or you can write it as 3 over 2. Now moving on to the probability question. Uh, that we have here. Now again for this I might have to shrink it down just so that we've got enough space on the screen. Uh, but let's have a look. So it says following a flood 120 tins were recovered from uh, Darmesh's corner shop. Uh, unfortunately the water had washed off all the labels of the tins. 50 contained pet food, 20 contained peas, 35 contained beans and the rest contained soup. A little bit, yeah. I'm not Sure, the uh, question and the namings is rather politically correct, and maybe a little bit stereotypical. But let's not go into that, even though, yeah, let's not best leave it as it is. Right. So, in terms of this, it says Dharma selects a tin at random. Find the probability of that one it contains soup. So for this, we have so from this, we've got out of 120, how many of these contain soup? Uh, and it's going to be well, it's going to be 120 minus 50 minus 20. 35. Again, if I just type that straight into my calculator, see 15, which simplifies to give me 8. 
Now the next question then says, does uh, what's the probability that it does not contain any pet food? Now again, obviously with this, if you want to write it as decimal equivalent, also get full marks for that. Like I said, just stay away from percentages. If it's a nasty number, leave it as a fraction. So for A2, it says, so in terms of this does not contain pet food. So not contain what, 120 minus 50, 70. So it's gonna be 70 over 120. I'm gonna enter my calculator to simplify, it gives me seven over 12. Is fine, or you could convert it as a decimal, which is not. For B, it says that Dharma selects two tins at random without replacement. Find the probability that now you'd be very, very tempted to draw a tree diagram, but for two marks, three marks, you really need to go ask the question of is it really necessary? Now, if you're a bit more proactive and, and think, right, let's have a look at what other questions might be, because you might find that for the first for this particular question. You don't have to draw a tree diagram, but it may come in handy for latter questions. So again, it's entirely up to you which one you want to go for. So for this, it says that Domus X two tins without replacement, find both that both contain P's. So P's is 20 out of 120. So the first one will be 20 out of 120. Then if you've already selected one, there'll be 19 left out of 119 tins. And if you work that out, it simplifies to be 19 over 714 which written as a decimal gives me 0 0.026. Then it says one contains pet food and the other contains peas. Now one contains pet food, well let's go for, that's gonna be 50 over 120 and the other contains peas, which is 20 over, and it's gonna be 119 or which is mathematically probability wise plus. I could have it the other way around. So I could have the peas being selected first and the pet food selected second. Is this, or you could just simply times one of them by two and you still get the same answer, in which you should have the answer of 50 over 357 or 0 0.1 three marks. Now again, it's always important to show you working out. Even if you're doing this on your calculator, just write down what you're typing in your calculator because like I said, for three marks, you're not gonna get three marks just simply by writing down one number. You need to show evidence about where it's come from. Now for C, it then says, Domi selects three tins at random without replacement. Find the probability that one contains pet food, one contains peas, one contains beans. Now, in terms of this, what we want to look at is recognizing that the probabilities are going to be the same. So here you could have pet food, or let's go for pet, peas, and beans. Um, so if I just call this A, B, and C. So the combinations I could have are A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, and C, B, A. C, B. So there are a total of six combinations in total. Now the probability of each row is going to be exactly the same. Even though the numbers in the fraction will be slightly different, it's still going to give you the same answer. So here what I need to do for part C is look at A, which is pet food, which was 50 over 120, multiplied by P's, which is 20 over 119 times beans, which is 35 over. Now that's just one outcome, but if I multiply that by six, now for each of these other rows, the numbers are gonna be the same. They're just gonna be jumbled up. So the numerators are gonna be jumbled up. The denominators are gonna be jumbled up. But when you multiply them, the order doesn't make a difference. You're still gonna get the same answer. So that's why we're not having to work out each individual one. And that's why the combination comes in handy. So from this, what you should have is the final answer of 125 over 1003 or you can write it as a decimal which is now moving on to question d it says find the probability that Domish will have to open more than two tins of uh, two tins before she finds one that does not contain pet food so she wants to find two cans so basically what this question is asking for is probability of getting a pet uh, can or tin i should say and another pet 
locked in. So that's going to be 50 over 120 multiplied by 49 over 119, which gives me 35 over 204. Or I could write it as a decimal as 0 0.172 to 3 decimal places. So moving on to question 10, it's related to binomial probability. So reading the question, it says that an amateur tennis club purchases tennis balls that have been used previously in professional tournaments. Probability that each such ball falls a standard bounce test is 0 0.15. The tennis club purchases boxes, each containing 10 of these tennis balls. Assume that the 10 uh, balls in any box represent a random sample. So it says determine the probability that the number of balls in a box will fall, fail the bounce test is at most two. So let's have a look at the probability. Now, first of all, whenever you're doing a binomial probability, it's always important that you set the parameters. So here my X is going to be binomially distributed with a sample size of 10 because there are 10 balls in a box. And the probability of a fail is 0 0.1. So that there is my N. P. So for AI, it's asking for most two. So I want the probability that X is less or equal to two. Now for this, I could just bring it straight into my calculator uh, using the BCD feature, or you could use whatever formula, but for one mark, I'll just go straight into your calculator. It should have the answer of 0 0.82. Part two, it says at least two. So this is the probability where X is greater or equal to two. Now that is equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less or equal to 1. So working that out, you should have 1 minus 0 0.5443, which gives me an answer of 0 0.4. And there is my answer. For question 3, it's asking for more than one but fewer than five. So probability that x is got to be greater than one and less five. So it's not, not inclusive of those numbers. So what I'm wanting is a probability that x is less or equal to four minus the probability that x is less or equal to one. Think about the numbers that you want. So I want four, three, and two. Now, if you want to, you could work out those three individual probabilities and add it together, or you could use the sort of process of elimination of bits that you want, maybe things that you don't want, and you should come up to this, the correct answer, if you've done this correctly, of 0.448. Now, if you've done it the inequality way, then this value here should be uh, roughly around 0.99. We should have 0 0.99 something, and this one here is going to be 0 0.5443. Uh, I know that one because on that here, and you should get your correct answer 0 0.458. Then moving on to B, so it says determine the probability that in five boxes, now five boxes, the total number of balls, so we're still looking at the total number of balls, but we've got five boxes. So here I'm going to have 5 times 10 which is 50, so n equals 50. So my parameters changed, which I need to then state the new parameters, and it's still gonna be 0 0.15. So from this, what I then need to do is work this out. So the probability of more than five, and that's gonna be equal to one minus the probability that x is less or equal to five. And again, if you word that out and type it into your calculator, you should have the correct answer of 0 0.7806. And then finally for BII, so we want at least 5 but most 10. So I want 5, ah, then what equals 10. And so that's going to be, I can calculate that by E equal, well, you can either work out 9, 8, 7, 6, which are the numbers that I want individually, add them together. Or you can work out the probability that x is less or equal to 9 minus the probability that x is less or equal to 5. 
type that into your calculator and you should have the final answer of 0 0.76801 oh. so, three marks but it's really important that you do show your clear working out so for question uh, BII it's important that you do state translate the question write down what it is you're working out write down the probabilities which really I should have done but just to save a bit of time in which you should have the numbers something along the lines of 0 0.8801 and 0 0.1121 for your probability of x is less or equal to 9 and less or equal to 5 and you work it and you should get 7680 but always make sure that you are looking at how many marks are on offer and making sure that your marks do justify it I'll be honest you're not going to get marks just by simply translating the question into basic mathematical notation of using inequalities. Your marks start from this and stating your values in between. And there we have completed the mix sheet. Now the test is marked out of 80 marks. It's really difficult to grade anything like this because we've only selected just a handful of topics and also looking at the difficulty in the question it really isn't like I said it, it's difficult to grade but I would say out of 80 marks any percentage score around about the 80% mark is looking good uh, for moving forward uh, anything below 50% probably need some work on and I definitely would look at the topic list of um, the questions that you've got wrong maybe go back revise them and maybe have a go at the questions again or maybe just sit in anticipation for the next installment of a mix sheet